Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. I had an intuitive prompt the other day. This is totally from just a gut feeling to offer out to Fred Dodson to be on the podcast. So I did, and he said, sure, we have several things we can talk about, including, if you're catching this in early 2023, his upcoming Levels of Energy course, which is going to be in Florida, May 26th, 27th, and 28th. And right after we did this interview, a new book came out called The Electromagnetic Self, talking about us as an energy field, literal electric energy. I'm working on the audiobook version of that now. We will talk about Fred's event in this interview, but there were some other topics that came up, including this first one from a podcast listener who also had an intuitive prompt in the middle of the day, acted on it, and boy, is she glad she did. We talk about that first. Please welcome back my mentor and the author of many audiobooks over these last years, Fred Dodson. Why don't we do an ohm together? How about that? You wrote in Levels of Energy that that's one of the highest vibrational sounds we can make. Indeed it is. Anybody can feel it, really. You do it and then you feel it. You feel the shift. So we bring that energy into this conversation. The reason I did that is that we have a heavy topic to begin with. Now, we're going to talk about the global theme of energy here. And that, of course, is going to lead up to your seminar that you're doing in May, the last weekend of May in Florida that we'll talk about. But I had a listener just the other day say that she felt intuitively and she has studied everything basically that we've put out. She felt something was wrong at home. And to me, first of all, right there, and I know I tell people on this podcast all the time how you stay grounded and connected to that intuitive pipeline. My buddy in Aspen called it the home office. You're connected to the home office all the time. And she was, and she felt something wrong. She went home and found her daughter in the garage. Fortunately, the suicide attempt was not was not successful, and her daughter was taken to the hospital. Wow. Then the daughter was transferred to a behavioral health inpatient facility. So that's like a hospital where you're checked in for treatment. And that's where she is now as we're talking. I spoke with our listener. Her name is Mary. And I spoke with her on Saturday. And we got to the point very quickly where we talked about Clearing Entities, the last book and audio book that we have out. And I pointed her to exploring this from the perspective that maybe there is an entity. And I said, no, not an entity, a demon. This is suicide. This is death. We're dealing with a powerful demon here. And I asked if there was a portal. And she said, yes, it was actually, she described what the portal is. We'll leave that private to the family. But perhaps through another person, perhaps through situation, there's an opportunity for an entity to feed off of this energy. So in light of that, I thought since we were talking today anyway, that might offer to Mary the opportunity to ask you a question. And she did. And here it is. Fred, if this is an entity related situation with my daughter, would it be best if she is in the behavioral health facility or if she was in an outpatient facility? which would be the best place for her healing. Now, we're not here to give medical advice, obviously. Yeah, I'm not going to give any medical advice. Can't do that. I can do it, but I'm not allowed to. Let me ask you this first. Mary, before I respond to you, let me ask you this, Thomas. Did you do entity clearing uh, with the daughter? There have been two, at least two occasions where a group of people have done entity clearings based on the process that was in the book. And what happened? Within hours after the first one. And the first one was done by Mary and her, as she says, her support soul team here on earth. So these were, a, this was a group of people that she assembled. And at a fixed point in time, they each did their own little ceremony. And wow. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And within, well, the next day, the daughter started to allow her sister to come to the facility, which she had not done before. She started taking some of the recommended medicine so that she can at least start healing her chemical levels. And she started to share things with her mom. And then within a day after that, her mom was allowed to come in. So the wall started to fall. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to refrain from giving advice on that. My personal preference, though, I can share that, would always be outside of facilities because there's so much going on within facilities. Not that she doesn't get any more care, but that she gets that care in an environment familiar to her. That's what I would do. But that's not the advice I'm giving because I don't know her specific situation. I like the fact that entity clearing has been done. And that's certainly something everyone should do in addition to whatever the hospital does and recommends. Best wishes to you, Mary. And keep doing what is causing improvements. If your clearing sessions have caused improvements, then keep doing it. And stop doing what does not cause improvements. When you're dealing with that level of entity attack, and like I said, I, I phrased it to Mary as demonic in this case, not pesky entity. This is serious business. This thing went after her soul, her life. How often do you find that sometimes these things have to be done to shake that thing off? It's so hard to answer, Thomas. I've had everything from one session to 40 sessions, honestly. I just have the, I don't really care how long it takes. Also in manifesting, I've said this many times, I care that the result is manifested and I'll go on and on until it manifests. You either find a way or you make a way. <laughs> the um, important aspect of this is to not get discouraged and just give up and stop because discouragement is negative vibe you need to do things that cause encouragement empowerment improvement whatever that may be if it's the sister coming if it's t going for a walk outside if it's talk therapy or whatever the hospital recommends if it's entity clearing whatever causes improvement you just keep doing that and you do it until it no longer causes improvement, and then you look for a new method and the next method that causes further improvement. Of course, there's a there's a history there. You can't just blame everything on entities because a person, in order to attract such, a person would have to already be in a low state, be sad. It could be sadness. It could be depression. It could be anger. It could be fear. And as that's prolonged, you attract certain energies. May I ask what Mary and her daughter do professionally? Mary is a hospice nurse. So she actually deals with this every day. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, that's hospice is a field where you need to clear and clean yourself every single day because it's a hospice is a portal. It's uh, in between this realm and the next realm. So people who work in the hospice need to be especially conscious and take good care of themselves, not exhaust themselves. <laughs> right there it is, okay? And, and do you know what the daughter does? All that I do know is that she worked at a restaurant. Well, that's all I have to say about it for now, Thomas. Let me ask you broadly here. Let's expand out from this situation because the question was, should she stay in the facility where she's receiving traditional medical treatment or should she go back home or come home to mom? I don't know where she would go. But you mentioned a minute ago that there has to be an environment in order for this to progress, obviously. So when somebody is trying to deal with a situation, I don't care if it's a divorce or maybe they're just in a really toxic job and they come home every day exhausted and they know that their energy level, their level of energy is depleting over time. They can tell they can, but they have to put food on the 
table. They have to pay their bills. When do you separate from that negative environment enough to be able to get your head back together in order to heal? You bring up a good point. It could be that the hospital is a better environment. You never know. You know, the, the person has to know that. Maybe the person wants to get away from home, then the hospital is an improvement. <laughs> if that situation so, is bad, right? You then yeah, get, yeah. Yeah. A supportive environment goes a long way in healing. If you don't have that supportive, safe environment, you can still heal, but you need much more willpower because you're not getting any support from your surroundings then you need to take responsibility and do it yourself. I've done it many times, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm strong headed and stubborn. You're an Aquarius. I mean, you blaze mm -hmm. your own trail. So let's think about though. I mean, here's a young couple and there's three years into their marriage and all of a sudden there are cracks in the foundation and the daughter decides to go back home for a couple of weeks. Healthy. Being in a environment where you're loved, you're asking if that's a healthy move. <laughs> and separating from her husband, saying, I'm leaving for a while. Yes, absolutely healthy, absolutely healthy, because you need to regain perspective. If you have two fighting parties in a sports match, you separate them for a while. That's normal, okay? And then they regain focus and can focus back on the game to gain perspective and to be in a nourishing environment. It's not good for anybody to keep fighting. Relationship breaks are good. They can save a relationship. They can save a marriage. Good. All right. Well, Mary, hopefully that helps you with, as we've even been just talking around it broadly, don't know exactly all the details, but hopefully some of that helps as you formulate this with your family. So thanks for the question. You know, this also brings us to the topic of energy. Energy is behind everything. And it's just amazing, as I've worked with you over the years, how everything boils back to that foundational book, Levels of Energy. And you're doing a seminar on this in May of 2023 for folks that are listening to this ahead of the seminar. It's going to be in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, the last weekend of the month, the 26th, 27th, and 28th of May. Tell us what you have in mind for levels of energy and particularly how it's going to be either complementary or different from things that you've done in the past. It's um, unlike the last levels of energy course we had in Dallas. You were there too. So we're not going to be going into the levels of energy as such the participants you are expected to know the levels at least vaguely before you come in instead we'll be focusing on the best tools to ascend to uplift yourself in energy in consciousness the best tools which i've collected and taken uh, from 30 years of coaching. And what I want for the seminar truly is even if you don't use the tools after the seminar, and many people don't, we live in a lazy society. If you don't, you not, if even if you don't use them, I want you to have a permanent gain just from being present, just from being in that field and at least using the exercises once or twice. There are certain things that you can only experience in a group, in group energy. And I see a lot of seminars squandering that opportunity by doing stuff that you could also do at home or teachers who talk too much, right? But my seminars are based on human interaction and involvement, more doing and feeling than consuming. So people are conditioned to passively consume entertainment all the time and from school they're conditioned to just sit there in frontal teaching with the with the authority figure in front telling them what to think and that's not at all what's going to happen there's not going to be much talking for me just a little bit there's going to be a lot of experience a lot of feeling 
It's going to be lively and it's going to be fun. This is a little bit of a different venue that you're having it, or at least location. It's right on the beach. I mean, right on the beach. <laughs> New Smyrna, Florida. Why did you pick that particular location? Well, there's a lot of people coming from cooler and colder places. They don't have beaches. And when they go to Florida, they envision a beach, right? So I'm thinking about the people. Now, I, I'm I'm fed up with beach because I live here. I've had more than enough beach. <laughs> but I know what it's like to live in uh, colder places. You yearn for the beach. That's what everybody associates with Florida. That's why I'm doing it at the beach. Moreover, water is releasing. I recommend you go into the cool water in the morning and, and really cool off before you come to the seminar. It's a very good idea if you want. Release whatever you want into the ocean. Water is cleansing. And the sound of waves is positive. Even if the beach is crowded and noisy, uh, it's still healing and still soothing. So you'll see that um, New Smyrna in the morning and in the evening, it's, it's very beautiful. It's not that crowded. In the daytime, while we're doing seminar, it's more crowded. But you're not going to be part of that because we're in the seminar. You'll be experiencing that beautiful ocean in the morning and evening. I can sense an exercise or two that might involve the beach, probably. <laughs> absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So sandals are acceptable attire then to this event. I recommend light clothing. It's going to be very hot outside, but also a sweater or two because uh, as you go indoors, AC in Florida is usually too cold. So it's this shift. It's like a sauna, and then you go out into the, to an ice bath, you know. So take a sweater or two for indoors or inside whatever hotel you're in, whatever shops you go into. That's a good point. So we've, yeah, for the people who are attending to bring clothing that you would want to walk on the beach, because there probably will be that, it is literally right in the sand of the beach. Um, you couldn't be any closer. And then the other thing, so are there other preparations that people should take or be aware of before this? I, I recommend they come a day before and maybe stay a day after. That's um, giving yourself space and time. Giving yourself space and time equals abundance consciousness. You know, I have this person, they're flying in from abroad, and their plane lands on the morning that the seminar starts. And that's not a good idea at all. They're doing it anyway, but it's, it's crowded. They're not giving themselves the space to, to, to experience. I don't like it, but I can't prevent it. <laughs> um, I recommend that people leave their phones in their room. I can't make that mandatory, of course. Nothing's mandatory, but it's a suggestion. Because if you have too many electromagnetic fields in the room from phones, it can kind of mess with the energy a little bit. So that's a recommendation to just let go of that addiction for three days, that addiction to uh, to screens and phones and to information and needing to be up to date all the time. This is time for you, just for you. It's not for your business or whatever. So I recommend phases where you just leave the phone aside or switch it off or put it on airplane mode. Other than that, um, you don't need to take notes because I've written the main points down for you. You'll get a handout. Come as you are, no matter who you are, you're going to have fun. Anybody meeting a bunch of other conscious people are going to have fun. That's one of the things about your events, that the groups stay tightly knit together years after the event is over. Because it's an unforgettable experience they share together, and that creates a bond. The experiences they have are uncommon. You don't normally have them in society. You go to the mall, you go to the restaurant, 
uh, to the theater, wherever you don't have these energies. And then you're with these people in this unique experience that nobody else is having. So only that person knows, you know, how the, the you remember back in the day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that creates bonds for life, friendships for life, indeed. Energy is everything, isn't it? Yeah. We are made of energy. Animals are made of energy. Plants are made of energy. Objects are made of energy. Universe is made of energy. So it kind of makes sense to do an, a course on energy. <laughs> and yet, even the most practiced people, okay, it's real easy to say, oh, just be in love or just be in high energy. Just think of creative thoughts. Think of joyful thoughts. Stay in a joyful space. And yet, yesterday, I have a mail service because I travel around so much that I have one anchored address where all of my mail goes and they scan it to a PDF file that I can read, but I have to ask them to open it. So yesterday I was sitting there going through some things and a message popped up that I had a letter and it was from an attorney's office in Dallas. Dum, da dum, dum. <laughs> like what in the world? And I looked them up real quick as I responded to the email for them to open and please scan the letter. I looked and it was a litigation. Well, they covered everything, but litigation was kind of the thing. I'm like, oh, Lord. And I have to admit that for that 15 minutes or 20 minutes before they scanned the envelope and I saw that it was absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. In fact, it was the opposite. It was a bankruptcy letter from somebody that... Uh, I have a, a little interest in their thing. So it was actually money <laughs> it was, if I pursued it. I mean, it might be a whopping $35 or something. It's not much. But uh, the point is that I had absolutely nothing to fear, and yet fear consumed me for those for that time. And I knew in the moment, I'm like, Thomas, you're going into low energy. Stop it. And yet, physiologically, until I knew what was in that letter— my mind was only on the, and I was forcing it back to the other side, right? Stop thinking about that. Don't let that thought continue, this kind of thing. And yet it was there. We are really programmed often to tip into low energy. Yes. And once again, the basis of this one is an assumption, right? Assumptions. I talk about reactiveness and assumptions so much, even if it were litigation you might have or, or negative news you might have the assumption that this negative thing leads to more negative stuff instead of becoming an opportunity for something better all these assumptions people have these labels things are like this and like this and like this uh, the other day a friend of mine had an assumption and, and felt fantastic fear because of it so, so he thought somebody would cancel a job, cancel a certain uh, big contract. And he had already given up before he even got, just because this other person didn't call back, didn't return their call. He said, well, this person is ghosting me. He didn't return their call for only one day. And I said, how can you say that? It's only been one day and you already feel ghosted. Uh, modern vocabulary <laughs> you already feel ghosted by him after one day he had already given up right and he he went through this it turned out that the guy was still on board uh, all was still well he asked me to do a process with him you know to to get him through it and it took about 10 minutes of conscious processing and that thomas is what we often forget that when we feel those things, we need to stop what we're doing and go through a conscious process to clear the air, to clear the energy. We don't stop. We just keep on going through the day. Now, if you feel that, you need to regain control. You need to get back to who you are because fear is not who you are. Fear does not serve you. So if you feel that, that's great because you notice there's something to correct. There's an assumption or belief that is not serving you that's how we know it's not serving you the fact that you feel fear even if it were bad news fear would still not serve you 
you're using a label on something that is not serving you, right? So I had really, really bad news uh, about three weeks ago on the amount of tax I need to pay. I mean, really, really horrible. Uh, okay, I need to pay more tax than I made throughout my entire 20s. <laughs> it's insane amounts of tax. And at first, you know, it kind of got to me. I'm like, uh, what am I doing all of this for? You know, this is a uh, theft. And it is. It is literally theft. Even so, uh, that's not a, even though it's theft, objectively speaking, that's not a conducive thought because that thought just generates anger. So I'm going to have to, then I thought, okay, I'm going to have to find another way to see this. And I had to actually sit down and process through it until I rearranged my consciousness. And then I could feel better about it. And now I do feel better about it. And there's no fear. There's no anger. I, I'm good with it. But I had to sit with it for a while. I had to sit with it for 15 minutes and do some exercises on it. And people think they can just skip the work because I'm so conscious, I can just skip the processing. Like, oh, I don't want to do processing all the time. Well, you save yourself a lot of trouble by exercising on it. It's like saying, you know, I can have a, I can be fit and have muscles without doing exercise. Just like you can't do that, you can't feel energy and high states without ever doing exercises. Granted, the exercise amount of exercises you do, they, they get less with time as you get better, as your consciousness increases, but you can't do without, just like you can't do without water. You need that nourishment, that energetic nourishment. You need to nourish yourself. I need good food physically, but I also need good mental food. That's something people just tend to forget. They don't nourish themselves, and then they're depleted mentally and when you're mentally depleted that's when fear creeps up and it should creep up we want it to creep up to warn us that we're mentally and spiritually exhausted and need to get back to who we really are and and feel our our power that's a really good point you use the negative energy the lower energy as the reminder no this is not who i am and this is not where i'm going to stay and then you have the tools to get back up Precisely. My request is that the process that you went through would be a part of this course. Would you mind? <laughs> if it's not already in, slip it in there. Well, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's, it's you know, one of the basic things you need, every human being needs to know how to deal with negative energy. That's the whole point of the seminar. And we're just going to go through a hundred different ways to deal with life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. It is absolutely part of the course. Dealing with fear and anger, taking it and making it useful. Because if a person can do that, there's really no limit, not even the sky. Yeah, because the levels of energy extend beyond. <laughs> yeah, the sky is not the limit. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And, you know, that's a good point, because as you get up here on the timeline of life where I am, you realize that you're spending a lot of your time now laying the groundwork for what's ahead as you cross over into the next area. It's like, hey, I've got all this time that I can really focus on what I'm going to wrap up, how I'm going to wrap up here, setting up there. And uh, that's been a shift. That's been a focus of mine for a couple of years now, and it's just incredible. I love it. I like that. Setting the groundwork, setting the stage for the next level, setting the stage for the afterlife to level up. That's how I see death, leveling up. Well, I got it from you. So <laughs> uh, here's another one. Let's talk about seminars in something, because on a podcast, let's see, when was this? This was number 322, podcast 322, just a few back from this one. I found, uh, actually, a listener sent me an email 
she was struggling. And the struggle is one that I know that you've addressed a lot in your work. It, she was struggling between her Christian background, and you have a Christian background, I have a Christian background, this person had a Christian background. She found this video online where a lady had been to, and I'll just say it was a Joe Dispenza seminar, and we're not comparing anything here to Joe Dispenza or his work. That was the stage. It's all in the podcast, including the audio from the lady. I describe a dispenser of wisdom, is he not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a meditation. Sorry. Well, this get I mean, this is crazy because it was a meditation seminar. So here's a large group of people. I have no idea how many, where it was, no, none of the details. But here was a large group of people getting together to meditate for the specific intention of healing. And this poor lady went to this seminar and felt that because they she said at the beginning, they invoked kundalini energy at the beginning. Well, that she was saying that it was serpent, a serpent and satanic and all this stuff. And she said that God left her, abandoned her, pulled away from her. The Holy Spirit left me during this meditation seminar. And it was basically her lambasting anything related to what was not Christianity. Now, what was interesting, and I have full spectrum on this, she was a worship leader in a church. So she got up and led the music in some kind of way or played in the band or whatever it was. And she was into everything new age. She was into astrology. She had crystals. She was into tarot. She was doing all this. She even had a device in her home that she said was supposed to change the energy vibe in her home. So here is somebody who is living the, let's say, quote unquote, new age lifestyle while she was getting up on Sunday and leading the band in her worship service at church. Now, to me, that seems a little bit unintegrous right there. Well, not, not not to me, not to me. I think you can uh, be in different worlds, to be honest. I think you should, actually. I think it's helpful to experience different worlds. You say it's unintegrous, but I like it. I'm that way. <laughs> would, would the church people have appreciated it, though? Would they have wanted to I guess know? The, yeah, the, the unintegrous part is... Uh, not communicating it and not being who she really is. She That's was unintegrous. It. Yeah. She was uh, integrity is to say, look, um, I'm a Christian, but I, I'm also interested in this uh, new age stuff because you'll find that some of it is compatible. My, my message to Christians is you need to focus on the gospels, not on what the church teaches because humans teach all kinds of stuff. And, a lot of stuff, to be honest, is false. But if you focus on the Gospels of Jesus Christ, you'll find compatibility. Also, if I were to talk to Muslims, I'd say something similar. If you focus purely on the Quran and not on what religion teaches, you'd find compatibility with energy teachings, New Age teachings. Likewise, New Agers, if you'd focus on spirit within, you'd find compatibility. What I'm saying is that at a higher level of consciousness, you find compatibility. At lower level of consciousness, all you find is conflict and contradiction everywhere you look. There's a contradiction. That doesn't fit. Nothing fits together. Okay, I don't understand how does this fit to that. But if you read my books, and that's one of the purposes of my books, you see how everything somehow interlocks and fits together. My book, Levels of Heaven and Hell, a lot of people wrote to me. They said, I did not know all these religions have so much in common. The reason is, at a lower consciousness level, it all looks contradictory and conflicting. And there's people who feed off of conflict and war, who try to emphasize the differences, emphasize um, how things don't fit together. Now, for Christians, just stick to the Gospels. Never mind what the church says. That's a, that's a 
recommendation right there. There's nothing wrong with energies. Like uh, I, I hear Muslims and Christians often say to me, we don't use the word energy. That's a... Uh, but um, you use the word Holy Spirit. You see how ridiculous it is? Uh, I, you, you, whole, what is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is positive energy. It's good energy. It's consciousness. Uh, we don't use the word. I, I, I used to do seminars in, in a lot of seminars in Muslim countries where they told me, don't use the word energy. I said, everything I teach is based on energy. What do you mean? Don't use the word. If I don't use the word energy, I, I might as well not do the seminar. Well, oh, it's forbidden. What, what Energy is forbidden. It's so that's no different than the science. Okay. Where uh, there's no such thing as a, uh, non-physical spiritual energy in science uh, it, it's all conditioning heavy brainwashing and conditioning from all sides from the si science side the science is settled and <laughs> trust the science from the you know it, it, the science is settled is like it, that, that's that's like a fanatic religious the the, the the statement of a fanatic religious cult the science is settled that's absolute okay the science is settled stop questioning things shut up that's what religions have done and you also find this in the so-called new age field they separate themselves so strongly from the rest of discourse from ancient tradition from religion from christians from uh science the separation is is the problem things are compatible and that does not mean that everything is true and everything is correct and everything is valid all i'm saying is that some things are compatible with other things that's all it's important to me thomas it's very important because there's so much confusion and labeling now as to dispensa i can't speak on that i've never attended a dispensa seminar so there's absolutely no way i'm going to comment on something i haven't experienced myself i don't do that everything i write about i have some knowledge or experience of right and i've not been to one either so i can't uh, contribute to that either and i didn't on the podcast i just analyzed what she was saying and in, in light of that so let's think about this event coming up in may if somebody comes and they have a christian background are they going to be uncomfortable or how are they going to be safe in the environment of Levels of Energy Seminar? Christians are not going to be uncomfortable because I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a matter of vocabulary, too. It's, there's um, ways to present things. It's the context that an atheist, a um scientologist a christian a muslim a buddhist a hindu can feel comfortable with these are common sense things that i teach that everybody everybody pretty much knows already intuitively if i say take a deep breath what's controversial about that <laughs> if i say get into the cool water as i did earlier what's controversial about that that's neither controversial for a hindu nor Christian. You got to be smart. If I say, I wrote an article that said the spine as an electromagnetic antenna. I don't call it serpent energy. I don't call it kundalini. I call it an electromagnetic antenna, which it is. Nothing to do with serpents at all. Not the least bit. So wh wh why be stupid? Why not tell it as it is? And if you tell it as it is, there's no controversy. Okay, this has nothing to do with any snake. In fact, the, the image of a snake is negative in almost every culture. I don't understand why you would go and, and say, um, this is serpent energy. It's stupid. You don't have to say that. You can say this is um, electromagnetic energy, which is what it actually is. Okay, and I also don't have to say this is cosmic energy. No, it's just electromagnetics happening in the spine. And when a Christian hears that, he'll be he or she will be like, "Yeah, okay." So it's I, I feel that actually, yeah, I do feel that sometimes in my spine. I feel a trickle here and there. Now, this energy could be used positively or negatively. 
Okay, that's another story. It doesn't matter. But facts are facts. You have energy. That's a fact. You are energy is also a fact. There's nothing contra. I mean, if that's controversial, you shouldn't be in the seminar. <laughs> you know how you, you, the problem, Thomas, is everybody is offended these days by every little thing, and I, I don't, I don't attract easily offended people into my seminars. I attract tough people, strong people, confident people. So there's not going to be any person. I don't care if you're this, this, or this, or what your belief system is. I want you confident and strong. And if you were a proper Christian, you'd be strong and confident because you're with source. And you wouldn't be offended by every little thing, you know. So taking offense is, is putting yourself in a victimhood position. And I try not to, in my life, I try to cut out all offense. Like somebody says something I don't like, I don't go like, how dare he, how dare she. Um, I, I try to cut all of that out. Somebody says something I disagree with, I, I don't want to get offended. I, I hear stuff I disagree with every single day. I'm surrounded by ignorance every single day even in my coachings or, or anywhere. Incredible ignorance, Thomas. But I don't get offended. I, I want to radiate compassion from the heart, not offense. And all these belief systems and religions would do well not to be offended, um, but to learn and grow. I can listen to something I disagree with, and my belief system is not threatened. If your belief system is that easily threatened, you don't really believe it. If your faith is that easily threatened, you don't really believe it. I can listen to any opinion at all, and my values are not threatened. My values have been pretty consistent since 20 years. I've been listening to uh, people talk since a long time. It has not shifted my values the least bit. What would you say would be a good rule of thumb for people to base a decision of, so I'm just thinking of this young lady who has this belief system, and she finds herself in a seminar that now all of a sudden she's uncomfortable. Broadly, if she analyzed this and looked at the intentions of the seminar that are favorable, and she even said in her videos that everybody around her was blissed out, they were all peaceful, they were all enjoying the experience. She was not. So as you said, she was reacting to this. What would be a good metric for people to step into a situation, whatever it is, and say, you know what? This might not be my cup of tea, but I'm, I'm comfortable here. I could participate in this or I could enjoy this without making it wrong. Like you said, without judging it and without carving it up and making it bad and wrong so that at least they can enjoy a neutral energetic experience and then say, well, you know, I did that once. I'm not going to go back, but, you know, it, it was okay once. Well, this lady is looking for in this specific situation, in my view, Thomas, is discernment. To discern whether a thing is... There's some seminars that are truly manipulative and... You know, everybody's totally blissed out. I'm actually writing a book right now where I talk about manipulative seminars. So it's a, funny that you bring this up. I talk about manipulative New Age teachers um, who have an agenda. Well, everybody's totally blissed out and loving the guru, but there's a manipulative agenda. And it might be that she picked up on that and that she has great intuition. Or... The other possibility is that she's judgmental and fearful. So what she's looking for is discerning between fear, indoctrinated fear, because she's been indoctrinated on this topic, or intuition. That's what this is really about. And I talk about this at great length in uh, my books on intuition. I got two on them. You need to discern between judgment and intuition. So in this case, 
she could um, take this seminar, this dispenser seminar. She could do some muscle testing on it. I'm not going to say dowsing because she's a Christian, but she could do some muscle <laughs> testing on it. You see, you got to be smart. <laughs> you got to know who you're talking to. I know I'm talking to Christians. So I'm not going to say dowse. I'm going to say muscle test it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's the, the stupidity of life. You got to to every person and belief system. You got to say a different, and that's a problem in this world. That knowing what you'd have to say to get people's approval or disapproval. Ideally, you don't give a damn if you get people's approval or disapproval, and that's what actually that's what attracts people to my events. They know I don't care. I'll just say what I think. Right. That's really that. That's I wish everybody were that honest and authentic. But in this case, um, she could test. She could either pray on it. She could pray on this event, pray and ask for guidance on Joe Dispenza, uh, request answers in her dreams. You know, if you pray, you often get answers in your dreams. She could muscle test on it. She could do my intuitive awareness method on it. And then she would get clarity, whether it's manipulative or good. Then another thing you you can really do to know is to study the people attending, really look at the people and how their lives are going. Are they healthy? Are they happy? Are they succeeding? To what extent? Are they conscious? Are they fun to be around? You know, there's so many signs in a seminar I don't I, I I don't necessarily think that Joe Dispenza is uh is is the creep type, creep type guru, because the people who go to Joe Dispenza are the same people who come to my seminars. So so I really I doubt it. But could be. What do I know? Okay, what do I know? I've not been, but I checked with a couple of people who I knew had been, and they had nothing but very good things to say. So yeah, so so but there's ways to to check it, you know, ways to test the truth, right? For yourself. For yourself. Yeah, for yourself to th th isn't that what everybody wants to know how to discern and she failed to discern. And according to her scriptures, she needs to discern. That's what her scriptures say. That's what Christianity says. Uh, you need to learn discerning truth and falsehood. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, your work is open to all faiths and all beliefs, and you've opened up so much of a perspective for me because I had that limited belief system when I was making my changes 15 years ago now almost, and you really helped me see the broader picture through a number of the books. Uh, Lives of the Soul was one that really shifted things for me. And then Levels of Heaven and Hell was, and then a lot of these new books that you've been writing just opened up that there is so much more out there than these limited construct corporate belief systems allow you to believe. I like that. Corporate belief systems, indeed. That's what, 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 what really upsets me so much is these cookie cutter belief systems, these pre- defined stereotypical identities we carry around stereotypical identities okay so i am this and then i have these beliefs and do this but i do not do this uh, your spirit is capable of much more flexibility not dilution you don't want to dilute the energy where you're just a little bit of everything Okay, you, you, it's okay to be this, to be a Christian, to be a uh, atheist or whatever you're going to be. That's okay. But at the same time, it doesn't have to become a stereotypical thing where everything you say is predictable. You know, just uh, automatic reaction. Like you, you see an atheist online and it's so boring because you already know their opinion on every single topic. It's just, that's not the way humans are supposed to be. A lot better to observe. <laughs> All right. Well, any final words on the seminar? Any final thoughts on the event itself? No, the event is, um, it goes so many directions. That's what's exciting. 
you never know for sure beforehand. I'm actually, the reason I advertise it so many months in advance is because my entire life until the event is a preparation for it. And I'm still including certain exercises, discarding others, developing new ones, and just feeling in my coachings, I'm actually experimenting on the, um, I'm doing coachings, by the way, and I'm experimenting in exercises to see what works and what doesn't work and whatever, you know, does this still work? And I'm using my coaching to prepare for the seminar. It's going to be very cool, very awesome. And what makes me happy is that half the participants were already in the last seminar in Orlando. Awesome. So I've never had that many returners. That means the one in Orlando was good. And now I'm going to have to top that somehow. I want to top that. And that can only be done if I create a context where I step back a little bit, a context where people can experience for themselves and try for themselves in interaction with each other. That's That's my goal. My goal is that they find ways to feel better than they've ever felt before without my help, without my pushing and manipulating it. Because that's that's the problem with a lot of seminars. They People feel high in the seminar because there's a, a overarching presence of this um, teacher who's radiating his or her energy, and then they go home and the energy is no longer there. So I'd like to find a way where people can generate it from themselves and I step back. And by the end, they'll know how to switch on, how to feel themselves and elevate themselves. They'll know it much better than before the event. Those are my last words, Thomas. You know what made Orlando so amazing is that for two years we had been told to stay away from each other and that somebody else was dangerous to our health to be six feet within them. And you were pinned down and everybody came together from around the world who had been experiencing different varieties and flavors of this. And we just wanted a great big hug. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the COVID advantage this time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge advantage because you're totally going against the system. And I don't have that advantage this time, but um, that'll make it better because everybody will be a little bit more cozy and comfortable. Because even so, that was right in the middle of the so-called pandemic. There were still a lot of people who weren't were on the fence. They weren't sure whether this is safe, what we're doing, you know? We're going to try. I mean, he's not wearing a mask, not asking anybody to wear a mask. What is going on here? But we'll try. It was a huge leap of faith, huge leap of trust for people because they had been told otherwise. And then it turned out that all was well. Nobody got sick. You know what you do have, though, as an advantage? Let me ask you this. A lot of people, I think the pulse, if you check the pulse out there, especially among spiritual people, like our little group in, on Facebook of our podcast listeners is a great place to experience what conscious people who are really trying to live their path are going through. There's a lot of angst out there right now about all of these bizarre things that are happening in our world that look like they're going to be restricting our freedom. I was talking to one of our listeners this morning, just before we got on here, who is in her 30s. And she has young children. And I asked her, I said, how are you looking out at the future? I can't imagine being 30 and raising kids these days. And you came from a very oppressive, restrictive movement in New Zealand toward oppression. And people are feeling this, and they're awake to it. And they realize that governments are trying to lock us down, and there are technologies that are almost going to be unavoidable of chips and databases and all this stuff. How do, the question is, how do we stay in high energy 
when it looks like that scene from, what was it, Star Wars, you know, where they're in the trash compactor and the walls are <laughs> coming in and it's like, it looks like it's, ah, when is it going to be, ah, right? And you experienced that. You escaped that. That to me seems like a tremendous platform. How do we stay high in a world that has not existed in our lifetime? I do need to say that your phone and your screen is a portal for this kind of information. And as long as there's no screen, no portal into your house, these are portals into your house. As long as that's switched off, all these oppressive things don't exist. I do need to free phrase what I'm going to say with that. If your screen stays off, you don't even know a so-called pandemic exists. Number two, if you're going to look at conspiracies that are happening, look at conspiracies where the good guys win in the end. The good guys and girls win in the end. Because there's a lot of... The, the fear mongering is a script that creates the fear. So there's a freedom movement out there and the so-called freedom movement often drifts off into the fear movement. And that doesn't create freedom. Freedom is created by staying free within your own life, creating self-sufficiency first in your own life, and by localism and community, knowing your community. Freedom is created by no longer supporting oppressive agencies. You know, it's, it's, it's sad that uh, the majority of uh, people who who sign up on my website, for example, are using Gmail. Is there any more oppressive company than Google? Totally oppressive. They censor my stuff. They remove my videos. Even so, people don't care. Most of them go on. So you don't have to support Google. There's so many email providers out there. You don't need Gmail. And yet the majority are using Gmail. That's one example. It has to start with yourself, not out there not in uh, fear-mongering, but in taking back your sovereignty, taking back your identity, taking back your divine self, your energy, taking back your health care, taking back your food. I'd assume, sounds strange, but I'd assume someone who still uses Gmail and has their emails read under the guise of scanning for advertisement opportunity or whatever, Gmail does scan your emails, also doesn't eat good food <laughs> it, it sounds weird but it all fits together yesterday a student of mine told me that only seven percent of land in america is used for organic farming that is incredible seven percent used for organic farming that is so sad why not take back the land why not purchase land and start organic farming why not stop using Gmail? I could list millions of ways to make freedom greater. And that's better than focusing on fearful stuff that might or could happen. Creating the society you prefer instead of continually complaining about the society you don't prefer. So a lot of these, you know, on social media, so-called freedom accounts are not freedom accounts. All they're doing is complaining and complaining this happened and this happened, this oppression happened and this happened. Uh, so what? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? It's good to become aware of the oppression, but it's not good to just stay with that. And next day I'm going to post something so that you're really aware of the oppression. We've been aware of the oppression. I've been aware of the oppression since 40 years. What good is it going to do me if somebody tells me about the corruption of the government. I know, I know the government is corrupt. I know Google is corrupt too, because they remove my videos. What am I going to do about it? Well, I already did something about it long before YouTube removed my videos. I set up my videos elsewhere. You can see my videos at Rumble and people know this, but they don't follow me on Rumble. Now I have almost no followers on Rumble. They prefer supporting YouTube supporting censorship and corruption so it's not the government that's at fault it's not the corrupt people that's at fault it's us we are responsible for who we support right 
I quit giving uh, Google money about eight years ago. I quit my Gmail account at around the same time, eight years ago, because I want to support a different world. I want to support a free world. So I, I wouldn't blame the powers that be. And I've always said this, do not blame the powers that be. You are responsible for your reality. I've created a fantastic reality, a beautiful life. Um, where I lived before, it was starting to close in, as you just said, really close in. So I created another reality that's a bit more expanded and spacious. And then I moved to Florida and it's a bit more spacious. Don't have to wear a mask. Don't have to get vaxxed in order to work. That's great. You know, I don't understand why I'm still alive because in New Zealand, I was told, literally told, if you don't get vaxxed, you're going to die. I'm still alive. Here I am. Okay. I'm, I'm, but I wasn't told by a physician. I was told by normal people who had been brainwashed. You are going to die. Somebody pointed their finger at me and that's, that's energy, right? That's uh, electric energy right out of the fingers. You're going to die. That's like a curse, speaking a curse on somebody. Well, I rejected the curse. I'm still alive. I never even got the sniffles. <laughs> I don't mean to sound arrogant, but that's the truth. I think uh, one day, one day I got the sniffles out of in the last five years. Well, we're going to get together in Florida and we're not going to get sick and we're going to raise our consciousness and we're going to be prepared for the future, whatever it may be. And we're going to bring in what we want, not what they want for us. Yes, yes, we will create what we prefer, the society we prefer. And it's exciting. Thomas, it's exciting to defy oppression and create what you prefer. That is fun. I think that's the, yeah, that's a great takeaway of this event. For those of you who are attending, and you can register at realitycreation.org, we're going to walk away from that event with a game plan and a mindset for the future. And we are going to be those leaders that you just described. Boom. Print it. I'm going to put that on Google. <laughs> the new book again is called the electromagnetic self we'll have an interview or a feature of that when it is complete and out on audio but the kindle and print books are available now and if you would like to spend three days in a very high energy high consciousness environment come join us down in florida in may Hope to see you there. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Fred. Until next time, enjoy the journey. I'm Thomas Miller. Thanks for listening.